and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about curves. So on my Instagram this week I put out a call for what videos you would want to see and um, one person came back with uh, curves. They wanted to know about curves. So here we are. We're going to walk through the basics of curves, show you what they are, show you how to use it, and then show you how you can use it to enhance a photo and kind of what it does and just explain the overall functionality of it. So first of all, what what is curves? You hear that word a lot in photography and Photoshop and essentially what it is is it's an adjustment layer. So if you come over here to adjustments, you'll see here on the top row in the middle, there is a curves adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and click on that. So here's what your curves panel look like and you can see that it put it on a new layer above. So you have the same ability to apply a layer mask, you can paint this out to hide it, you can drop down the opacity, you can use blending layers with it, you can do everything that you can do with, uh, with just normal layers. But what this does is this allows you to change the highlights and shadows and colors within the image. So just to kind of break down where we want to start here, if you look at this, so you have a graph here and it goes from darks to lights here and then from darks to lights here. So over here, this is all of, this is the histogram based on the lights and darks in your image. So as you can see, there's not a lot of very bright stuff here, but there's um, a good amount of midtones to darks. And you can see that in the image. So we have a lot of darks in the wheels and the grill and the lower car here, the windshield, the top of the car over here in the background. A lot of this is what you're going to see in this general area. So what, what a lot of people use curves for is they'll kind of just come over here, draw a point, lift it up, and draw a point and drop it down. So now what we just did is we basically made the light areas lighter because we pulled this point up into a lighter area and we pulled this point down into a darker area. So again, going back to that, this is the graph of darks to lights and then same thing over here, darks to lights. So this is what people call an S curve on the curve. So if somebody ever says, you know, we need to apply an S curve on the curves or I applied an S curve to get some more contrast, this is what they're talking about. That's the general idea of what most people use curves for is it's a lot of times it's used to add contrast back into the image. So if you can see, we just made two simple points, moved it a little bit, and you can see the image went from pretty flat to we got some punch and some contrast into it. So let's go ahead and reset that. Going down, so we talked about darks to lights, darks to lights. We talked about this graph line here. This is your histogram. Up here, the other thing that you're able to do is you're able to affect the image through the entire image, but then you can also affect individual color zones. So you can switch to the red channel and you can adjust affect the red. So if you want to put more reds into this, you could lift that up and that looks ridiculous, but you could do that. Or if you wanted to put more reds into the shadow areas, you could go and you could lift this up and now anything that's dark is going to be red. Now one thing to know when you're in these individual channels, if you lift up on the curve, which is this way, it's going to apply that color. So we're in the red channel, we're lifting up, it's going to apply more red. If you pull down, it's going to apply the opposite of red. So we're in RGB, RGB color space right now. So if you think about RGB, the opposite of RGB is CMYK. So if you pull up on red, the opposite of red is cyan. So if you pull down on red, you're going to introduce that cyan color into it. So the cyan's canceling out the red and vice versa. So the red's canceling out the cyan. Same thing with green. Let's reset this really fast and go into green. 
So same thing. So you can push into the green if you go up. And if you push down, you're going to get that magenta color. We'll reset it again. And then same thing with blue. If we push up into blue, you're going to make your image more blue. If you pull down, you're going to make it more yellow. So that's an important thing to remember. The opposite of what's in here, if you pull down, it's going to cancel out that color and it's going to apply the other color. But if you push up, it's going to apply the color that you see. Let's go ahead and reset. So just working through here, here's your trash. If you want to get rid of this layer, you click that. If you want to toggle it off and on, you can do that. You have your reset button here. This button, if we apply something really fast, this is going to show you what it looked like before and after you applied the adjustment. So it's helpful to see kind of what you're doing as you're working through. And then this button right here, this is going to make a clipping mask. So if you have multiple layers, it's only going to affect the layer that's right underneath it. So if we made a copy of this, if we made a copy of this bottom layer, and let's say, let's do this. Let's apply a layer mask to this really fast just to show kind of what this does. And we're going to select half of the image. And we're going to fill that half with black. And we'll deselect. So if we click on this and we click this button, you can see it's only affecting that layer underneath. It's not affecting the first layer. So you can see we added the contrast here. Over here, it's not showing the contrast because that clipping mask is on. If we take that clipping mask off, it's going to apply to the whole image. And let's go ahead and get rid of that. So then working over here, so this first button here, this is going to allow you to go into different areas of the image and adjust that tone curve based on what you select. So if we go into the grill here, let's say we click on this, you can see it's showing a point right here for us. So if we click there, if we want to make that area brighter, we can lift up. If we want to make that area darker, we can drop that down just by pulling down. So brighter, pull up, darker, pull down. So let's say we want to add some contrast in there. We want to make that darker. But then over here in the highlights, we want these highlights to be brighter. So we're going to go and click over here, and we're going to pull this right up. And you can see that added another point for us right there. And then let's say in the middle, we want we want to bring that up. We can do that. So essentially what we did is we made the darks really dark and we made the midtones and the brights brighter. Maybe not something that you necessarily want to do, but just illustrating the point, that's how you'd use this tool. So if you want this area darker, you just go in, click, and drop that down, and it pulls it exactly where it is on the tone curve. So the next one you have here is you can set your black point. So if we want our black point to be this, you can see everything gets significantly darker. We brought everything to that because this isn't 100% black. We're saying everything on the black point beyond this is going to get flattened over. So if we click that, you can see everything got darker. And you can see the, the lines there pulled those over. So if we go into the red channel, you can see it pulled the reds over, it pulled the greens over, and it pulled the blues over. So where that particular item was, if we click on something that's more dark like this, it's not going to have nearly the effect that it would. And same thing if you click on something that's significantly brighter, like this, it's going to really darken everything down. Because you're saying the black point starts here, not way over here where it was. Now, same thing here. This is your 
white point. So this is your highlight. And we don't really have anything that's super bright other than the headlights in this. But if you click here, you're going to get the same thing. It's going to pull all of these over right to where this point was. And then in the middle here, you have your neutral gray point. So let's say we want to select that as neutral gray. And you can see that was pretty close to neutral gray because it didn't change a lot. So over here, if you can also do this. So in color grading, a lot of times what you'll do is you want information throughout the entire histogram. And you can see here, we don't really have anything in the whites. There's no, there's not really anything in the image that's, that's white. So if we were to pull this back, we could pull this back to about here and not lose any information. And a trick to see this is you can hold down your option or Alt key, I think, if you're on Windows. And you can see when it starts to clip. So you can see in the lights, it's pure white, which would be expected. But you can see as we start pulling this back, we're starting to get a little bit of whites in the, in the sky. So maybe we go right before that happens and click there. So if we click before and after, you can see that just brightens up the overall image a little bit. We didn't really change a lot. What we did is we just started this white point where information actually starts. Now in the black point, because we have so much dark with the base of the car, the wheels, the grill, we have a lot of information in the darks. So if we were to do the same thing, you can see where we start clipping that information really quickly. So maybe we pull that back to here just before we start introducing anything into the car. So again, before and after, we just added a little bit of contrast on each end. Now, another thing that you can do is a semi-popular look that you see is sometimes you see where the blacks are kind of like a muted gray color. You can also move these points up and down. So this will introduce a little bit less contrast, but it's another way that you can get that kind of look. So if you were to pull this up, the image gets flatter, but you start getting that kind of gray, muted, dark color. And the image is really flat, so we'd want to go in and add some tone curve here to be able to bring that back. But I mean, that's a pretty popular look that you see. And it's basically done by just pulling this up a little bit, pulling this down a little bit, and pulling that up a little bit. So you're bringing, you're making the highlights a little bit brighter. You're making the shadows a little bit darker, but you've pulled that black point up on this side making them a little bit more washed out. Now you saw in here that I put a point in the middle. And the reason that I did that is, let's go back to where we were. If I were to pull this here, you can see it affects this entire curve all the way down. And that's not something that we necessarily want. So one way that you can get away from that is if you click right in the middle, and it doesn't have to be right in the middle, but click anywhere along it, that will kind of lock that point in. And then you can go in and you can adjust on either side of that. So it lets it not affect it as much. And then you can kind of just go in and adjust as you like. So let's actually try to use this to edit this photo. We want to give it a little bit more contrast. The other cool thing about curves is they can build upon each other. So you don't have to worry about necessarily doing it all in in one shot. This image is pretty flat. So let's start with a simple just add some contrast. So let's go ahead and click right in the middle here. And let's click on this little center point here. And we're just going to pull down a little bit to darken the darks. 
and we're going to come up here and let's just pull up a little bit to brighten the brights so as you can see right there we just added a little bit of contrast to the image and let's say we want to make another curves adjustment and let's say for this one we want to make the sky let's say for the sky we want to add some yellows to the sky so in here let's say we want to bring this down so again opposite of blue is yellow if you wanted to make the sky more blue you could do that you could bring it up but let's say it's at dusk we want to make it a little bit more yellow so we're going to click there and then let's say in the shadows we want to add some more blue so again before uh before and after so you can see subtle, but we really got rid of kind of that blue cast in here. It looks more like it's at sunset, just so we can see what we're doing with the layers. And let's go in and add another curves layer. So we're gonna try to just edit this whole image using curves. So let's say overall, kind of like the tone, it's at sunset. Um, I like the mood. The problem is the car is the car overall. I feel like it's blending into the background a little bit too much. So we want to bring that out as more of a focal point. So let's go over into curves and then let's lift the center point just so we make everything a little bit brighter. And maybe that area is good right there. But we only want that to affect the car. So you can do one of two things. We can, since we have black as our foreground color over here, we can hit Alt Delete and fill that layer mask with black so that hides everything. Then we can grab a brush tool and we can switch our foreground color to white and we can just paint in the middle over the car. Or the other thing that you can do is since we have a white layer here originally with black as our foreground color we can go in and we can paint the opposite so if we want to darken down the road and over here and maybe this area right here and then the good thing is since this is an adjustment layer we can go in and we can say all right well maybe we meant that a little bit brighter or the other thing that you can do is if you don't want to make it brighter, you can also make another layer and say, hey, we want this even darker. We like the way that that looks. We can bring this point down and then we're going to fill that with black again. So we have black as our foreground color. We're going to hit Option or Alt Delete. With our brush tool, we're going to hit X to get white. And now we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna paint right around here. So with these two layers, you can see if we click this on and off, we made the top of the car significantly brighter and we've darkened down that. So now it brings that attention into the car. With curves, you can also use it to add a vignette. So if you wanna pull this down you can see everything got significantly darker. You can take your brush tool and you can just come and brush right in the middle. It helps if you hit X so you have black because you're painting on a white mask. So if you come in here, you can see that we just made a little, a little vignette. So again, just pulls the eye in. Um, now let's say we lost some detail. Let's say we want some detail back in these wheels. So another thing you can do is make curve adjustment layers and just target them to specific areas. So we really want to bring up the highlights on those. And maybe we want the blacks to be a little bit darker, but
but we really want to focus on that highlight. So again, let's hit Alt Delete to fill that layer mask with black. And then let's go ahead and zoom right in here. Grab our brush tool. Let's make it a little bit smaller using our left bracket key. And we're just gonna click and we're gonna drag right in here. We're gonna make sure we change our color first though. And you can see we're just brightening up that wheel. We wanna do the same thing on the back. So now if we look at that, click before and after, you can see we added some highlights to that. If you wanna add more, you can just pull this top layer up and it'll brighten that up. So really makes them just kind of pop. Again, kind of all personal taste. If you, if you think that's too much, you can bring it back down or you can also bring the opacity down. Again, that's the power of having it on its own layer as an adjustment is you can go in and you can find fine tune all these things. Um, you can also go in making adjustment layer or another curves layer. We can just select the windshield. Let's say we want that darker. And we don't necessarily want that to affect everything. So again, we can do the same thing. Layer mask, fill it with black, go in with your brush tool with white and just kind of paint over that to make that windshield a little bit darker. So then let's say we like where we're at, but let's say we wanna do that kind of muted, muted black thing that I showed earlier. So maybe as one final adjustment, let's go ahead and click here. We'll bring this black point up And maybe we want to add just a slight little S curve on top of that. And maybe we can pull that up a little bit more. So I have no idea what this looks like before and after. So let's go through here really fast. Let's hide these layers. And let's look at our before and after. So I don't know if we made this image look better or worse. We definitely added some contrast. We added kind of some stylization to it. I was just kind of trying to show you all the different techniques that you can use curves for. You can really get kind of crazy with this if you want to go into the different channels and add different colors. So if you don't like the greens, you want to take out some green. If you don't like the blues, you can take out some more blues and just see how those kind of interact with each other. But hopefully this broke down kind of overall what the curves tool is, how you can use it in your workflow, and kind of just showed you some of the tricks using the click and drag option showing you how the different sliders and things like that work. So, so hopefully you found this video useful. Hopefully you found some techniques that maybe you can incorporate into your workflow or if you just had general questions about curves and how they work, hopefully it helps shed some light on that. So until next time, take care.